Hello. Zdravete. Since my ambassadorship in Bulgaria, the first question that people would ask me uh, to start a conversation is always, where were you posted before? And as soon as I said that I'm a professional artist, they would ask me again, then how did you become an ambassador? As it is complicated to explain the details of my life, so I just say, by the grace of God. And now, I'm here to share my brief life journey with you. I had a very colorful childhood, and I was exposed to the diplomatic world, as my father was a diplomat in a station in India and in Burma, now Myanmar. In the afternoons after school, I would spend time to play with children of our local helpers of Burmese and Indian origins. I still remember the religious practices of Hinduism and Buddhism at their homes and also the taste of their simple but delicious food. When my mom and my dad used to attend all the diplomatic uh, functions, me and my, sibling, my six siblings used to sit and wait for them in the porch, watching our Indian guard singing and dancing with, her, with his daughter, and also sometimes telling us Indian bedtime stories. When we have a reception at our residence, I would peep and watch in awe um, at the beautiful um, diplomatic ladies wearing their national costumes of Indian sari, uh, Chinese chongsam, and Indonesian kain kebaya, just like what I'm wearing now. This is my national costume, as my mom also used to wear then. In later time, I created a kebaya sculpture of an aluminum cast, three meters high, and entitled Yang Terhormat Ibu. It means to our most respected mothers. This is indeed to respect all women, mothers, grandmothers, and most of all, our mother nature. This is also to celebrate the spirit of sakti, which is feminine force, and also the creative force that lies within all of us. I should say that, for me, every day is a Women's Day celebration. Still strong in my memory, when my mom came back from, the, from her many receptions, me and my sister used to try to compete to get her special attention. And um, I used to sometimes massage her feet or her back. It is my special way of trying to win her attention. And she would then comb my long hair and sing to me tenderly her most favorite, favorite song. You might know this old song. When I was just a little, little girl, I asked my mother, what shall I be? Will I be pretty? Will I be rich? Here's what she said to me. Que sera, sera, whatever will be, will be. The future's not us to see. Que sera, sera. Anybody knows this song? <laughs> When we returned back to Jakarta, I finished my primary education in a Catholic school, where I also learned uh, another religion, which is Catholic, and also the rituals too. Looking back, I realized that my early childhood has actually shaped and um, enriched my cultural tolerance. So dealing with, your, with our children, I think we all need to be aware that our action today 
will shape and inspire their future. When I was uh, attending the university and also uh, being a journalist, actually, I was a fashion editor at the same time. My mom offered me to study in London uh, fashion designing as soon as possible so we all can be financially independent. So um, when I was studying in the West, being from the East had given, me, had given me the chance to experience and see life in a different light. I came to know that modern civilization has two wings, one from the East and one from the West. For a human society to be able to function in the best manner, I think we need to have elements from both sides. And in order to fly high, birds of the human society needs both wings. Life is a process of becoming. When I was a corporate wife, I traveled intensively and attended many international conferences, such as uh, State of the World Forum in the U U.S. and the World Economic Forum for many consecutive years. I met countless world leaders and uh, many interesting people from all walks of life. Among others, I was privileged to have lunch with the late Princess Diana when she came to Indonesia some time ago. I cannot forget that Lady Diana was a very humble person. When my handbag dropped under the table, she would bend and spontaneously pick it up, pick it up for me. Lady Diana was a, an example of a cultural diplomat. While I was pursuing my uh, artistic life or artistic career, I've created many artworks, such as painting, sculpture, installations, and uh, art performances, which mostly speak about women issues, um, gender, inequality, human rights, and environmental issues. I used to also taught art, and I also represent Indonesia in many exhibitions, uh, locally and internationally, such as the Venice Biennale in 2013. So this is my work um, at the Venice Biennale. My life journey has not been a walk in the park. I also face my share of challenges. We all have that uh, moment, uh, those moments when everything and everybody was against us. They said that when you stumble, that's where your treasure is. So I went down rock bottom to feel the pain and until I found the jewels of compassion and forgiveness. Each and every experience in life makes us ready for the next step. Maybe tomorrow will be another chapter of your life. In 2016, our president appointed me as Indonesian ambassador to Bulgaria, Albania, and North Macedonia. These countries are rich in cultural heritage, tradition, and art. He has chosen an artist to represent Indonesia in this cultural land. Situated right at the borders of East and West, I believe people of Bulgaria, Albania, and North Macedonia are Eastern souls living in Western lands. Dealing with different nations is embedded in the nature of Indonesians. With 260 million people, more than 17,000 islands, and hundreds of ethnicities in the same country, I think diversity is uh, very rooted in our culture. When I arrived first in Bulgaria, I saw on top of the parliament building it was written, United, we stand stronger. It is indeed parallel to my original home, Indonesia, and my new home in Bulgaria. We both share the same motto on unity. As the Cold War of ideologies ended long time ago, 
It's the time to present cultural diversities of different countries and make peace and harmony in the world. To me, human society is like a rainbow with different facets and colors of culture. I formulated my ambassadorship policy as cultural diplomacy to create people-to-people -people contact. I wanted people to see, to hear, to taste, to touch, and to feel Indonesia in different events and festivals. My ambassador friend, uh, who is a politician, she would like to be categorized as a political ambassador, uh, commented on my active cultural activities. She would say, Astari, I'm a political ambassador. I would not waste my time in cultural activities like you. I said, I said to her, artists express their political and their social views on their, through their art. Diplomacy is an art too. The art of diplomacy means to paint peace and harmony on the world's canvas. Cultural diplomacy is not only organizing cultural events, but applying the soft power of culture to strengthen unity of humanity. In 2017, I invited all Asian ambassadors to come together in, in Sofia, to come together and initiate the Asian festival in Bulgaria. All the countries, Asian countries in Bulgaria, uh, participated in this festival. It was very colorful, and it became a yearly program now in Sofia. We were able to bring South and North Korean ambassadors together in a friendly lunch meeting in Sofia last year, even months before the North and South Korean presidents met at their borders. Cultural dialogue between nations can overshadow religious conflicts. It also leads to political and economic stability, and it works in all aspects. It is interesting to share with you that in 2018, the trade value between Indonesia and Bulgaria raised by 400% compared to the previous years. Let me conclude my talk. Anywhere we find borders, let's build bridges. And remember, as love ties people together, culture bonds nations together. Thank you.